Hi there, it's Dr. Golligly. Today we're going to go through a couple of slides in a slide deck on the best medication to take for acute and post-operative pain. Now this is an opinion piece and I've entitled it The Way I See It. So let's get started. We're going to introduce a concept in the course of this presentation called the NNT, the number needed to treat. If you want a complete description of what the NNT is in terms of a statistical method, go to the NNT.com, which is a physician-centric website that explains how to make use of this statistic to make better healthcare decisions. Okay, I've taken their definition and I've shortened it a little bit. Number needed to treat measures the impact of any medicine or therapy. It estimates the number of patients that need to be treated in order to have an impact on one person. Now this concept is statistical, which most people are terrible statisticians, but it's intuitive because we know that not everyone is helped by a particular medicine of intervention. Some get benefit, some are harmed or have side effects, and some are unaffected and have no effect at all. The NNT tells us how many of each. Now here's what's surprising. The scientific evidence shows that the best medication for acute pain, and by acute pain I mean pain caused by a herniated disc, a back strain, recent lumbar spine surgery, cervical spine surgery, a sprained knee, acute and post-operative pain, is 500 milligrams of Tylenol plus 200 milligrams of ibuprofen every six hours around the clock. And studies have proven that this is a better combination than any opioid pain medication such as Percocet, Norco, Vicodin, or Oxycodone, any medication that's functionally or structurally related to morphine. Those medications have a reputation for having good pain relief, but their psychological effects are greater than their effect on physical pain. And in many cases, there are much safer and even better alternatives. To illustrate the, the, the concept of NNT, I'm going to try to break this down into a real-world example. Let's imagine that you're making lunch for this crew of 10 construction workers. What's for lunch is the idea. So these 10 guys are coming over to lunch and you've got to feed them. Option number one, you open their fridge and you've got enough stuff for cheesesteak sandwiches. Now that's a pretty good choice, maybe not the healthiest, but certainly a pretty good choice for a bunch of construction workers. Uh, we would all imagine that if you gave that group of 10 guys each a 12-inch long chili cheese steak sandwich, your success rate in terms of converting them from hungry to not hungry would be 100% and the NNT would be 1. In contrast, if you only had cucumber sandwiches, and maybe there's a couple of skinny guys in that group and they eat a lot of cucumber sandwiches, the success rate might be 50%. 50% of the people went from being hungry to being not hungry. That would give you an NNT of 2. What that means is that two people had to be fed with cucumber sandwiches in order to get one person to say that they weren't hungry. Let's look at a third option, carrot sticks. <clears throat> if we'd fed everybody in that group as many carrot sticks as they could possibly eat, maybe the skinniest guy in there would say that he's no longer hungry. That would give us a success rate of 10% or an NNT of equals 10, which means that 10 people would have to be fed with, cucumber, with uh, carrot sticks in order to get one person to say that they weren't hungry. Okay, let's imagine you're this person now. Let's imagine you've got a herniated disc at the L4-5 level on the right side causing low back and right leg pain. You can't sleep, you've got pain, numbness, and you need to get through rehab to see if this is going to settle down. Or let's imagine you're this person just getting done with a microscopic disc operation and you've got some post-operative incisional pain. The question that you want to know is what's the best medication to treat your post-operative or acute, your acute pain with the least number of side effects and the best chance of recovery? So this scientific evidence comes from the National Safety Council, which looked at Corcoran reviews of the efficacy of pain medication and compared over-the-counter pain medications to narcotic pain prescriptions. So we're going to look through these infographics themselves. The first infographic from the National Safety Council that we're going to go through is this one called Mathematics of Pain Relief. Now this is a really important message, but I give this infographic pretty low scores in terms of readability. What this infographic shows is that healthcare providers write about 260 million prescriptions for opioid painkillers in 2012. That's, the, that's any medication that's structurally or functionally related to morphine. And that as a result of all these prescriptions, there's a large number of overdoses. <clears throat> in fact, overdoses now kill more people than, than car crashes, especially if you're certain age groups, such as men between the ages of 18 and 50. When in fact, opioid painkillers may not be the best way to treat acute pain. The most effective pain medication combination is 200 milligrams of ibuprofen plus 500 milligrams of acetaminophen. Now this is where this infographic gets confusing. It shows that you had to add 1,000 milligrams of Tylenol, acetaminophen, to 10 milligrams of oxycodone to make the oxycodone effective as 200 milligrams of ibuprofen. Poor scores for communication on that one. 
a little bit clearer over here that 200 milligrams of ibuprofen provides as much pain relief for post-operative and acute pain as a 10 milligram morphine shot. Now here's the, here's the meat of this presentation is the NNT. Now remember that an NNT means that a medication is much more effective. So in this example, a 15 milligram oxycodone tablet had to be given to 46 people in order to get 10 of them to say that their pain score had gone had been reduced by half. So if they started with a pain score of eight, they went to four. If they started with a pain score of 10, they went to five. You had to treat 46 people in order to get 10 of them to achieve 50% reduction in pain with 15 milligrams of oxycodone. And there's a lot of people then that are exposed to side effects such as nausea, vomiting, constipation, urinary retention, and possible addiction. Whereas in contrast, ibuprofen plus Tylenol, 200 milligrams of ibuprofen plus 500 milligrams of Tylenol, had an NNT of 1.5, meaning you only needed to give 15 people this combination in order to get 10 of them to say that their pain scores have been cut in half. So this ends with the idea that you should explore alternatives to opioid painkillers. I think that's really important. We've recently switched to trying to use opioid painkillers as, um, as the treatment of choice for post-operative pain. So let's look at this um, slightly better um, infographic here on um, on uh, evidence for, for, um, for pain control. So same exact chart, perhaps presented a little bit differently. Here it clearly indicates the number of people needed to treat for one person to get 50% pain relief. So to get one person to get 50% pain relief, you need to treat 4.6 people with 15 milligrams of oxycodone. That's 4.6 people who are potentially nauseated, constipated, have urinary retention, or sitting around in the hospital trying to get out but they can't get the Foley catheter out of them versus you only had to treat 1.6 people to get one person 50% um, pain control with 200 milligrams of ibuprofen and 500 milligrams of Tylenol. So again, clear scientific evidence that shows that the best medication for post-operative acute pain, including post-operative pain and including pain from herniated discs and spinal disease is a combination of ibuprofen 200 milligrams plus acetaminophen 500 milligrams around the clock. We currently have an ERAS protocol, enhanced recovery after surgery. And what we're having people do now is take this as their primary medication after surgery and we're supplementing them with opioid medications for breakthrough pain or for emergency situations only. And we're seeing a dramatic improvement in how fast people are able to return to their normal activities, get off their pain pills, and return to their normal lives.